You're probably overcomplicating your apps. Let me show you the strategy that's actually working in 2025 and how easy it is to scale your app portfolio to generate $10,000 per month. My simple five-step strategy is so simple that any app developer can do it. Did I mention it's simple? I built this app in a day yet it's been paying my rent every month for the past year. It breaks all the rules. It's only got a single feature and there's literally millions of apps like this on the App Store already. I start every new project with the keyword research first. The most important thing you can do before you even write the first line of code is to research whether people are even looking for this app, whether there's an audience, whether there's users that will use this app. And I look for keywords that are popular with not too much competition. These are the types of keywords that I'm looking for. A popularity over 20 and competition under 50. I use Astro to research keywords. A popularity of around about 20 will get you this sort of revenue per month. A popularity of around about 40 will get you this sort of revenue per month. I've done a whole video covering keyword research. There's a link in the description below. And now we build the app. We already know the keyword that we're targeting, which makes it a lot easier to build an app that focuses on the problem the user has. Build one or two features in the app that solves the problem that they're searching for. Don't overcomplicate it. We don't need a sign into Google. We don't need to collect email addresses. You may not even need a setting screen at this stage. But what you do need is an onboarding process. So many apps that I see out there have an onboarding process that tries to teach the user how to use their app. It'll show the user the feature and how that feature works. If this is what you're doing with your onboarding flow, stop it. Stop that right now, get rid of it, you don't want that. The onboarding process serves one purpose and one purpose only. It must fill the user with confidence that this is the app that they need to solve their problem. And it must make them excited to use the app and continue, so much so that they would be prepared to pay for it right then and there. And that brings me to monetization. But this is where I do things a little bit differently. Where most people release their app on the App Store with all of the premium functionality built in and the paywall ready to extract money from the user's wallet, I release the app for free. If you can't get someone to use your app for free, how are you gonna get them to pay for it? And this has two amazing benefits. The first benefit is people are more prepared to use a free app and provide feedback for a future version. And two, people are more prepared to share that app with their friends. Hey, come check out this free app. That's free marketing, free growth, free users for your app. But this strategy only works if you don't have a lot of overheads. Keeping it as simple as possible is key. Then once the user acquisition has been validated, we can add the paywall. I've covered this in a previous YouTube video, link in the description, and I've even made my own paywall that I implement onto all of my apps. This paywall has been proven and tested over my four years of building consumer apps. And I start off with a paywall that has a $4.99 per week subscription with a free trial, and a $24.99 per annum subscription with no free trial. But Adam, that's really expensive. Netflix charges only a fraction of that. How are you adding more value than Netflix? I think most developers get stuck in this headspace that a subscription means they're accessing a service or extra features or extra functionality. With consumer apps, consumers are conditioned that they're paying for access to the app. Not extra functionality, not extra skins, not extra features, not extra filters. They're paying for access to the app. But who's gonna subscribe for a week and have their payments deducted every week? It turns out a lot of people actually want a weekly subscription. That type of user is unprepared to pay for a full annual subscription when they only need to use it for a week. You've published your app on the App Store and you're getting sales, you're getting downloads, everything is looking so good. This is the initial boost that Apple gives you in that first week where they boost your app all over the place in the App Store to get users downloading your app. And then after a week, nothing. This is the initial boost every new app gets in the App Store, but it doesn't last forever. A week later, you'll go down to pretty much zero downloads. 
Some developers will see this and think they've failed. Others will see it and try to add new features or functionality to try to recoup the users that they thought they're losing. But the reality is this is just the cycle that happens to every app on the App Store. After six months, you'll start to see the organic growth starting to take off again. I've created a whole video on App Store optimization. I'll put a link in the description below. And it's a deep dive on everything you need to know to find the keywords, optimize your app, and some of the little nuances that you just don't even think of. And it's based all on my own personal experience building apps over the last four years, and it's nothing that you'll see in a course. Using this strategy, you've created an app that generates $500 per month. Well done, that's an amazing accomplishment. But it's not really enough to quit your nine to five yet. What you have to realize is this strategy can be repeated time and time again. All you need is 20 apps making $500 a month to earn $10,000 or 10 apps a month earning $1,000. All you need to do is find new keywords and continue building your app portfolio. With each new app you build, you get a little bit faster, a little bit smarter, and a little bit better at spotting opportunities.